Here on the west coast of British Columbia, we're lucky enough to share our oceans with over 23 species of whales, dolphins, and porpoises, a group of animals also known as cetaceans. Cetaceans are a marine mammal that is hairless and spends their entire life in the water. They use their large tails, moving them up and down to propel themselves through the water. You might see these animals on the beach, in the harbor, on your next hike, on a fishing trip, or even from the ferries. Seeing a whale in the wild can be a magical experience, but unfortunately, life isn't always amazing for these animals. They are threatened by things like passing ships, overfishing, entanglement in fishing gear, and pollutants in the water. Here at OceanWise, we're working hard to protect and restore the ocean and all the animals that call it home. But here's the thing, we need your help. If you see a whale, you can uh, report your sighting through something called the Whale Report app. By just taking two minutes to report your sighting, you're gonna help send an alert to large vessels nearby to give them an early warning when they come within the vicinity of that whale. Now I know what you're thinking, but Aaron, I've never seen a whale or dolphin in the wild before. How am I gonna know what I'm looking at? Well, we're gonna show you how to identify eight of the most commonly sighted species in BC. Starting off with two of the smallest and most common cetaceans you might encounter, we have the harbor porpoise and the doll's porpoise. Harbor porpoises grow up to two meters or six feet in length, usually hang out in shallow coastal waters, and are normally found in groups of one to five animals. Keep an eye out for their triangular dorsal fin and their dark gray coloration. Harbor porpoises have been designated as a species of special concern under Canada's Species at Risk Act. Dolls porpoises can be a little bit longer, are found near the coast and in the open ocean, move really quickly, and can be found in groups of four to 20 animals. Dolls have a unique black and white coloration and have a muscular tail that makes for a distinctive square shape when they surface. These animals have been designated a status of not at risk. Our next species is the Pacific white-sided dolphin. Unlike porpoises, they have a sharply curved dorsal fin, can grow up to two and a half meters or eight feet in length, and can travel in groups of up to 200 animals or more. Pacific white-sided dolphins are the only small local cetacean that leaps clear out of the water and have been designated a status of not at risk. Now we have one of BC's most iconic species, and they're a hard one to miss. Killer whales, or orcas, are also a type of dolphin, albeit much larger at six to nine meters or 18 to 28 feet. They have tall, black, triangular dorsal fins with a white or gray saddle patch right at the base. Killer whales are highly social animals and are found in groups of five to more than 30 animals at a time. In BC, we have two distinct resident populations, the southern resident killer whales who are endangered and have only 73 individuals remaining, and the northern resident killer whales which have been designated as threatened. Our resident orcas are fish eaters, but their transient relatives, known as Biggs killer whales, are expert hunters who prey on seals, sea lions, and other cetaceans. Both types can be found in BC, but the Salish Sea is critical habitat for the southern resident killer whales. All four of these species share an important feature. They have teeth, so we call them odontocetes, or the toothed whales. The next four species we'll talk about are all mysticetes, or baleen whales. All of these species are very large and use baleen plates to filter their food out from the water. They're all generally kind of solitary and can be a little bit trickier to ID. So that's why we're gonna go over the key features to look for to help you ID these animals. First up, we have the minke whale. These animals can get up to about nine meters long, about the same size as a large adult male killer whale. They're found in coastal waters and are generally a solitary animal. They are very fast swimmers, which can make it very difficult to spot and research them. But if you do see one, you'll notice the white chevrons on the side of the body and the white bands on their pectoral fins. They also have a sharply tapered head that you may observe when they are lunge feeding. Minky whales have a sharply curved dorsal fin, much like the Pacific white-sided dolphin, about two-thirds of the way along their back. They've been designated a status of not at risk. Next up, we have the gray whale. They can get up to about 14 meters long, or 46 feet. That's about as long as a school bus and a half. These animals like to hang around in shallow coastal waters and bays where they forage, and they even roll in the surface and scoop up mouthfuls of sand and sediment, feeding on the marine invertebrates that live within. You might even come across the large indents and pits in the sand that result from this behavior when the tide goes out. In addition to this unique behavior, they have a distinct mottled coloration and are covered in barnacles and whale lice, which really makes them stand apart. And as if that wasn't enough, they don't have a dorsal fin. Instead, they have knuckle-like ridges along their back. 
gray whales have been designated a status of special concern. Next up, we have the humpback whale. Humpbacks can get up to 11 to 15 meters long. That's 37 to 50 feet. These animals have incredibly long pectoral fins, getting up to a third of the length of their body. They also have a small nubby dorsal fin on a raised hump of tissue on their back and tubercles on their head, which actually contain a single hair follicle each. But one of the most distinctive features of a humpback are their large tail flukes. You know a humpback is going to do a deep dive when they show off their big tail. What's even cooler is that their fluke coloration is unique for every individual whale. This means they can be used for identification, much like a fingerprint. Researchers on the coast maintain catalogs of all of these tail flukes to keep track of all of the humpbacks they come across and track their travel. Humpback whales in BC have been designated the status of special concern. The last species we'll talk about today is also the largest, the fin whale. They get up to 22 meters long or 72 feet. That's as long as two school buses parked end to end. Fin whales have a very sleek body and are very fast swimmers. Like minkies, they have a curved dorsal fin and unlike humpbacks, you rarely see their tail flukes when they dive. One trick to ID a fin whale is that their dorsal fin is so far back on their body that you won't see it until after their blowhole submerges underwater. So you won't ever see a blow and their dorsal fin at the same time. Because fin whales are so sleek and hard to spot, they're one of the species most commonly struck by vessels. Fin whales are generally found offshore and are rarely seen in coastal waters. They've been designated as threatened in British Columbia. So there you have it, the eight most common cetaceans you'll find in the Salish Sea and how you can identify them. For even more information on species ID and how you can help protect these animals, head to wildwhales.org or you can download the Whale Report app. And remember, you don't have to be an ID expert to report your sightings. Any information is going to help us reduce the impact of vessel strike and disturbance.